feet this morning as we usher in uh, into his presence. We want him more than we want anything else. Want him above everything else.
understand. I know that if Jesus doesn't come, which I'm hoping he does, yes, Lord. this morning would be a beautiful day to do it for him to come back. But if he doesn't, we're going to go by way of the grave. These bodies are going to get older and older, and there's a few gray hairs to remind me that that's the way I'm heading, and that's all right. He's brought us this far by faith. But if he doesn't come and he, and he chooses to let us go by way of the grave, that means these bodies have failed because of the fallen condition of man, because of sin. But the blood of Jesus Christ, the yes. blood of Jesus Christ right. still saves and he yes. still heals. And I believe that with all of my heart. I know if we went around the room to, this morning that we could, we could testify of how he's touched our bodies how he's touched our minds, and I don't understand, I don't claim to understand why he heals some and doesn't heal others. But I know that everything he does is right, yes. and everything he does is in his great love for us. Yes. And I'm so grateful for that this morning. So we still believe that Jesus is the healer. Yes. Said all that to say, he's still the healer. And if you have breath in your body and he hasn't taken you home yet, He's still got purpose for you, and I believe he wants us to be whole in our bodies and whole in our minds, most of all, whole in our spirit. If you need healing this morning, I believe Jesus wants to touch you. I believe he wants to lay his hand upon you and let your body be healed in whatever capacity he, you need healing this morning. So I'm going to ask you to come, invite you to come, and we're going to pray for you. We're going to lay hands on you, as the Bible says. And believe God to touch you and heal you in Jesus' name.
to believe God. And I know we're all real people this morning, uh, real believers that say, Lord, you know that sometimes when I'm in the valley and I'm faced with that impossibility, it's not always easy to believe you. But you know what? <laughs> he knows us. He knows us this morning. Jeremiah, uh, the prophet, would say, the Holy Spirit through the prophet would say, I knew you. I knew you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. I knew you. I know all about you. I know all about you. I know you. I know you're standing up and I know you're sitting down. I know you're going out. I know you're coming in. I know the trepidation when the bill came in that you weren't expecting. When the doctor's report wasn't what you thought it might be and what you were hoping for and what you were believing for, but the God that's the same God on the mountain is the same God in the valley. He's the same God. He hasn't changed. And when you look in his eyes, he's still the same. And he is faithful through it all. He is faithful through it all, and he's going to be faithful through it all. And I know, again, we're human. We like to have a good report. And ultimately, we get the good report. Ultimately, we are going to have a good report. Where Whether he heals us here or he heals us there, we're healed. And I'm so grateful for that this morning. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful through it all. And if we didn't, that's said all that to say. I took you to Grandma's house, bringing you back. But said all that to say that when we're in the valley and faced with an impossibility, it's there that our faith is put to the test. But it's, man, it's there that we get to know him just a little bit more. We, just, we get to know him a little bit more than, than we did before. And truly, we're grateful for the valleys. We're grateful for those tests. Man, I'm reminded, if there wasn't a Red Sea, we would never know that there was a crossing of it. If there was never a, you got to let my people go, Pharaoh, then we would never know that there's a, there's a release from Egypt that is a, real, a reality and a possibility. And if there was never a, a bitter waters at, the, at Mara, that we would never know that the tree could make the water sweet. Hallelujah. There's a tree that'll make bitter water sweet. You just got to get to the tree, put the tree in the water, and all the vicissitudes of life will be made sweet. Just getting to know him. Getting to know him. You can take your seats this morning. I'm so thankful. I know I haven't mentioned it yet, but I know it's obvious. Uh, the one that I love is not here this morning. Uh, he is at uh, up in Grand Island, New York with Mike Chory and Cross River Church there ministering uh, this morning. I know he's, he's had a uh, tremendous uh, services. He's texting me all weekend and saying, uh, babe, we've had tremendous services. God's been moving uh, and we're thankful for that. Thankful for what God is doing in New, uh, New York. And, and some folks reminded me, say upstate. Uh, he's not in New York City this morning, but Lord knows New York City needs the gospel. Uh, and we're thankful for that, but grateful for what God's doing there in New York. Grateful for what God is doing here in Tennessee. And God's not finished with us yet. He is not finished with us yet. There's a few folks on the beach this morning, uh, so I've heard, and so we're praying for them as they're maybe tuning in uh, and listening and thankful uh, that uh, Nate and Libby and their family are celebrating their graduation with their family this morning. So we want to pray for them that the Lord would bless them, like just bless their socks off. He's able to do it. He's able to do it, and we're grateful for that. And speaking of having your socks blessed off, it's time to give this morning, uh, and we're thankful. Uh, I feel like the Lord has just impressed upon my heart to remind you that it's a good thing to give, that it's a good thing, and not only is it a good thing, it's a God thing, and the, it's not based upon the amount of the gift, it's based upon the heart. It's based upon the sacrifice of the one that's giving. And he knows us, as we've alluded to this morning already. He, he knows us. He knows us completely and totally. And uh, do 
dear, dear sister has, has said, it's not equal gift, it's equal sacrifice. That's right. That's right. So whether you are a widow with two mites to put in, or the Lord has blessed you and blessed your socks off, and you've got a million dollars to put in. Equal gift. Equal sacrifice. It's the heart that he's looking for. And when he has our hearts, he's got our pocketbook. And the reality is, when he has our heart and he's got our pocketbook, he's got everything else. And it's all his. And as we often say, everything that comes into our hand has come through his hands. And it's come through his heart first. Before it ever came into ours. And, and really what he's spoken to my heart to say is thank you. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for what you're doing for the work of God in Murfreesboro, in Tennessee, and beyond. Yeah. And beyond. We've got something in the works that's going to be able, I believe, to encourage you and show you. Your, your, your gifts are touching the world. I know it's hard to believe in a little storefront church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Your gifts are touching the world. There's some folks in Brazil this morning that are blessed as they're tuning in. There's some folks in South Africa, in Africa, in England, in Germany, in Norway, in the, in, in, in the South, in South America, in Mexico. And boy, I'm going to leave some folks out and I apologize for doing it. But coast to coast, from New York to California, God is using you to send the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to a hurting world, to a broken-hearted world that needs the gospel.
in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10 would simply say that I may know him. Yes. That I may know him. I'm going to say it one more time. That I may know him. We want to know him this morning. I know that's your heart. I know that's our heart. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you. I want to know you a little bit more than before I walked in those doors this morning. I want to know you. I want to know you in the secret place when ain't nobody else looking. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you when I'm in my vehicle and I'm in traffic and I'm stuck and I'd rather not be. I want to know you. <laughs> I'm just going to read some mail this morning. I want to know you. I want to know you when no one else is in the house and the blinds are drawn and the door's shut. I want to know you. I want to know you, that I may know him, that I may know him. Let's pray one more time. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, I thank you for every heart here. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's watching and that will watch later. Lord, I thank you for the sheer privilege that we have of getting to know you. Lord, that we would know you in an intimate way, Lord, that we would know you when nobody else is looking, Lord, that in the secret place we would know you. And, Father, that you would have your own way in our hearts and in our lives this morning. Father, we thank you for that. Thank you that you know us. And, Lord, we get to know you. And, Lord, we praise you. We give you all the glory this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 And amen. Philippians uh, chapter 3, we know here that the Holy Spirit through Paul was writing to the church at Philippi. Paul was under house arrest, and man, is that if there's any, uh, any time that the Lord wants to, to get your attention, <clears throat> sometimes he's got to put us in prison. Sometimes, and, and maybe without physical bars, and boy, she's, she's, she's preaching this on Sunday morning. Uh, I thought we were supposed to get our dancing shoes on. But sometimes, before we can have our dancing shoes on, we got to wear the steel toes. Amen. And then take them off so that the Lord can scrunch their toes. Those toes of ours. He wants our attention this morning. And many times he'll allow circumstances, allow situations to come into our heart and come into our life that get our attention. And God can do whatever he wants to do anytime that he wants to do it. But he loves us so much that he'll allow a, a prison just for us. Not to say that Paul did anything wrong. He found himself uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it was really persecution that led him to this prison. Sound familiar? And we won't go all into that uh, this morning, but it's familiar. Persecution led to prison, and through that, we have the book of Philippians this morning, and we have Paul's heart. We can hear Paul's heart as he says, I want to know him. I know where I am. I know where I find myself, but man, I want to know him. I want to know the one who threw me off my camel on the road to Damascus, threw me off my high horse, yes. and said, whoa, whoa, Lord, uh, who are you? <laughs> who are you? It's, it's phenomenal to me that Paul, in, by today's standards, before he knew Christ, he would have been considered a theologian. He knew all about who God was. But he didn't really know him. Yes. Man, think about that for a moment. We can know all about him. He knew the Torah inside and out. And if we, if we back up just a minute here in Philippians chapter 3 in the first uh, several verses, and you know, I'll, I'll pick up with verse 5 here. We, well, verse 4. We, we don't rejoice in, and have any confidence in the flesh. We're not rejoicing in what we can do or who we are. Verse 4, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks that he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Concerning the law, I was a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Concerning the righteousness which is in the law, I was blameless. 
He's, he's writing his resume, his repertoire. He was telling everybody, look, man, if there is, if there is anybody that can have confidence in themselves, in their selves, it's me. I, I, my, my heritage, my bloodline goes all the way back to the father of faith, my, goes back to Abraham. I was, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I, I got it going on. My family, do you know who my family is? <laughs> do you know my last name? I really have got it going on. I sat at the, at the feet of Gamaliel. I have the best education by today's standard. I've got it. I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I was circumcised the eighth day. My parents did everything right. I did everything right according to the law. I am it. And so if anybody has anything to boast <laughs> about in their own righteousness, it's me. I can boast about it. I did everything right. I jotted, I dotted every I and I crossed every T. Nothing. I am blameless in the eyes of God. So he thought <laughs> before that Damascus Road experience, and the Lord again threw him off of his camel or off of his horse, caused him to become blind, and he had to say, Lord, who are you? Who are you? I thought I knew all about who you were. But man, oh man, Lord, I know nothing. I don't even know who you are. And Jesus had to speak to his heart, and he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the pricks, to kick against the goats. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. <laughs> I'm Jesus, the one that you're persecuting. And just like that, and I know if I, again, gave you the mic, we could all say that we've had a Damascus Road experience. Maybe it wasn't as, as incredible as Paul's was, but I can tell you this, it is just as incredible as Paul's was because you were on your way to a devil's hell right. and now you're on your way to glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, it doesn't matter what your name is, you're going from hell to heaven. And just like that, in a moment's time, once you said, Lord, yes. I believe, yes. Lord, I believe. I don't know if you were in a church. I don't know if you were in your vehicle. I don't know if you were all by yourself, but you were probably in a mess that you couldn't get out of all by yourself. And you cried out to Jesus and you said, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. That's the sweetest prayer you can ever pray. Jesus, help. Or Lord, help. Or just yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Doesn't take a long religious prayer. It just says yes. We just got to say, yes, Lord. And Paul went through that Damascus Road experience. You've had that Damascus Road experience, provided that you're saved and born again. You've experienced Christ, and you've said yes to him. And now it's your heart's cry that I want to know him. I want to know him. I want to know him. I'm thankful he's brought me these many years. Whether you got saved yesterday or you've been saved for 50 years, it, it ought to be our heart's cry. I want to know yes. you. I want to know you just a little bit more. Amen. I want to know you a little bit more. And we're going to back up in just a minute, but I'm going to go forward in verse 12 where it said, uh, it says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Yes. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting this, those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I know I haven't reached there yet. I have, I'm not there yet. But man, I'm a little closer than I was yesterday, but I still got a stretch to go. So I've got to forget those things that are behind. I've got to let go of those things that are behind me so that I can get in and know him a little bit more today. I got to let it all go. 
Whew. Yeah, it goes right there. <laughs> I've got to, and not I've got to, I get to. I get to forget those things which are behind me. Do you know that there's absolutely nothing that we can do about yesterday? That's right. Man. There's absolutely nothing that you can do about yesterday. And truly, there's nothing that you can do about tomorrow yet. Even with all of our plans, and those are not wrong, we need to plan and we, we need to, to have purpose and know what our purpose is in this life and in this world. But there's nothing we can do about yesterday, and there's nothing we can do about tomorrow just yet. But we have the gift of the present. We have the gift of the present right now. We're given right now. Isn't it a wonder that when the enemy comes, he always barks about what's happened yesterday? Because he knows there's nothing that can be done about yesterday. Yesterday is under the blood. Yesterday is under the blood. And thank the Lord it is. Hallelujah. And as the Lord uh, has mentioned to me many times, I've put up a no fishing sign. And you don't need to go back and start fishing all that stuff up. It's under the blood. There's nothing we can do about yesterday. It is gone. Oh, Hallelujah. Yesterday's gone. Right. Hallelujah. Oh, Yesterday's oh, gone, sweet Jesus, says the little song. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, teach me to take one day at a time. <laughs> teach me to take one day at a time. Just right now, Lord. And Jesus would say, don't trouble yourself about tomorrow. Today's got enough trouble of its own. Yeah. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or the clothes what, uh, that you're going to put on. Today is sufficient. The evil in today is sufficient. Forget about all of that and just trust me for right now. <coughs> right now. That takes all the pressure off. Right now. Boy, I know we're already thinking about what we're having for lunch. <laughs> but we got a few minutes till then. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Lord, for a sound mind right now. Thank you that you have delivered me from all the yesterdays right now. I thank you that I don't have to have the weight of, of tomorrow and all the tomorrows because you've got it all taken care of right now. Aren't you grateful for that? I'm so grateful for that. And so right now, we get to know him. We get to know him. We get to be in relationship with him. And we get to, we get to come to the, the secret place with him, to the intimate place with him. I know there's several words for the word know. We can, we can say that we know somebody. We can say that we know someone that we have just met. I know them. I, I know them, ne their name, so I know them. We can say that we have knowledge of someone that's an acquaintance. We know them. And that is a, a, that's true. We have a knowledge of them and as an acquaintance. But there's a knowledge that we can have that goes beyond someone yeah. we've just met, that goes beyond an acquaintance, even goes beyond a friend, though we are friends of God. It goes into the the secret place, the yes. knowledge of yes. someone being intimate with another yes. speaks of a husband and wife relationship, that intimacy that is experienced. And that's the word that's found right here this morning, that knowledge, that intimate place yes. with Jesus Christ, to yes. know him, Praise to really know him, Thank to really know him, yes. man, to know him, Lord. to really know yes. him. And and forgive me if I may be boring some of you, but to know him in an intimate way is the greatest knowledge that you'll ever have for all of eternity. Yes. To really know him. To know him when I'm on the mountain. To know him when I'm in the valley. To know him when I'm walking the plain. To know him. I want to know him. I want to know him. I want to know him when I wake up. I want to know him when I go to sleep at night. And I want to know him every other part of the yes, day yes. to really know him. And I'm not fussing at you this morning. <laughs> You're in church on Sunday morning. <laughs> and I'm shouting hallelujah. And I'm thankful for that. But I just yes. want to encourage you. Let's get to know him. Yes. Let's get to know him. 
Well, I didn't, I didn't, I promise it's not in my notes and I didn't come to fuss at you. Praise the Lord. But if we know the folks on our favorite sports teams, yeah, yeah, a little bit more than we know him. Yeah. <laughs> and boy, I guess I need to pick on myself this morning. That's okay. Thanks, sister. <laughs> <laughs> But if I know him, or if I don't know him as much as I know my favorite newscaster, or my favorite person on X, if I don't know him more than any other yes. thing, yes. let's just cover the gamut, I'm not looking at anybody. <laughs> if I don't know him more than I know everything and anything else. If, I don't, if it, it's not my heart's desire to lean into him a little bit more, mm -hmm. then Lord, check me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Check me. Check me, and as my husband likes to say, I'm <coughs> preaching to myself. <laughs> check me, because I haven't arrived. I've not yet attained. I've got a ways to go yeah. still. I've still got a ways to go, but I'm thankful, Lord, that I get to know you. I'm thankful that you've shown me that you know me, and you know me better than I know myself. He knows every anxious thought. He knows every word on your tongue before it's given. Isn't that good news? He knows what a rascal you were going to be before you ever knew. <laughs> and he loves you. With an everlasting yes, love, yes. so much so that he wrote your name in the palm of his hands. He's not going to pull you up out of the ocean to drown you in a puddle. He knows you. He knew you before you were ever born. He knew you while you were being formed in your mother's womb. He knew you, and he loves you, and he wants relationship with you, and he's hungry for you, and he desires you. I'll say he's even jealous for you. He is jealous for you. He's jealous for you. Sometimes he'll pull all the other things away, all our other lovers. Yes. So we can return to our first love. Yes. Mm. Yes. So we can return to our first love and you say, ow, Lord, ouch. <laughs> that hurts. And sometimes it feels like he's pulling us through a keyhole backwards. <laughs> I know, get a visual of that. <laughs> and that's painful. That's painful and it doesn't feel good. Lord, it doesn't feel good. But I know that you love me. Yeah. So I'm gonna trust you that you're only taking me here because you want to remove all the other lovers so that I can return to my first love and I can know you in that intimate space, in that intimate yeah. place as the one who Hallelujah. loves me the most and knows me the best. Hallelujah. That I may know him. That was Paul's heart's cry. I know I've got the best education. I have a heritage that's worthy of gold and honor. I, I know that I, I go all the way back to the the father of faith in Abraham, I'm untouchable and blameless as a Pharisee, but I count all that as dung. And dung is dung. <laughs> well, okay. I'll just leave that there. Because <laughs> we're going to lunch soon, which I told you to forget about just a moment ago. But dung is dung. And Paul... The Holy Spirit would say in verse 7, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. I count them as dung. I count them as, as garbage, scraps on the table yeah. that are to be swept off and put in the fire. But, but, don't you know where I went to school? Don't you know who my family is? Don't you know the name on my church? It's all. 
and I love you and I love our church, <laughs> but you're his. Right. You're Amen. his. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. We're under shepherds, but he's the great shepherd. Amen. Amen. Yes. And I'm so thankful that he is so fit to allow us to be the under shepherds, right. but we're under shepherds. You're his. You're the sheep of his pasture. And we love you, and will, Lord knows we'll help you any way that we can, but he's the shepherd. Yeah. He's the shepherd. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what name you've got over the church if you don't know him. Amen. Amen. Yes. And we want you to know him. Yeah. And I know I'm ministering to the choir this morning, and I feel like I'm fussing at you, but someone just wrote us recently from England that said, Correct me, Pastor, if I'm wrong so I can grow. Mm -hmm. I want to grow. I want to be a little bit more like Jesus. Yes. yes, yes. And that comes through relationship with him. Yes. And it comes through allowing him to have his own way in our heart and life. The Holy Spirit conforming us from the inside out. Not the world conforming us from the outside in, but the Spirit of God on the inside conforming us into the image of Christ. So that I can say next Sunday, man, you look a little more like Jesus this week than you did last week. <laughs> and I know we're not looking at one another and pointing at one another. Please, Lord, know that we're not here to condemn. We're here to lift up. Amen. And we're here to encourage. And God doesn't have one word of condemnation for his children. He lifts us up yes. and he encourages us. And he encourages us, I believe, this morning by saying, I want you to know me a little bit more. I want you to come aside and rest a while so that you can know me a little bit more. And all those duties and responsibilities and we all have them, and we have an abundance of them, but they all come from knowing him. So we can all say, and I know you, well, I don't think I say it every Sunday, but maybe I will. <laughs> Jesus told Mary and Martha, told Martha of Mary, she's found the one thing that's needful. Yes. Mary has chosen that one thing that is needful. She's sitting at my feet, and she's learning me. I don't want to just know about him. I don't want to just know about him. I don't want to have a Bachelor of Theology on the wall and say, yeah, I did it. But not know him. I want to know him. <laughs> I want to know him. Paul would go on to say that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. There's the mountain and the valley once again. Being conformed to his death. That's where we live. <laughs> we get to die. Come and die, the master calleth. Come and die. I know it's come and dying, but come and die, the master calleth. Come and die. Because that's truly where we get to live. Yes. When we die to ourselves yes. and Christ lives in us, yes. we live. Yes. That is truly living. That is truly living. We die to live. And I know there are many religions that live to die. We die to live. And this is not a religion, as we're going to just briefly mention here in verse uh, verse 9, this is not a religion. This is a true, it's truly relationship. It's truly relationship with the Father through Jesus yes. Christ. We have relationship, divine relationship. What a privilege we've got. Yes. What a privilege. And doesn't that make you just so grateful that Jesus came? Yes. It makes me so thankful that Jesus came because I couldn't do it and you couldn't do it, but Jesus did. Yes. Jesus did, and that yes. is relationship. Religion will kill you every single time. Legalism kills, as we see in verse 9 here, uh, 
and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is, is from God by faith. I'm found in him, not having my own righteousness. Yeah. Saul was all about him, was all about what he did, uh, had done and was doing. But when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, all of his righteousness became as filthy rags. And he was finding himself in Christ Jesus. Yes. Nothing of myself, not of my works, nothing in and of myself that I could do, but only in Christ. The righteousness which came from the law is nothing is absolutely nothing and I could not attain unto it but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ the righteousness which is from God by faith simple childlike faith simple childlike faith you've heard us say it many times you don't need a boatload of money because then God would be unjust as giving privilege to only some the ground is level at the foot of Calvary the ground is level. Doesn't matter what color your skin is. Doesn't matter if you're brown, black, white, yellow, red. Does not matter. The ground is level at the feet of Jesus. Doesn't matter if you've got $10 million in the bank or you're below zero. It doesn't matter. In the name of Jesus, everything is level at the feet of Christ. It's level. Excuse me, it's all level. The ground is level there because God is a good God and he's yes, a just God. Yes, yes. And everyone has been given a measure of faith yes. that we can say, yes, Lord, I believe you. Yeah. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Okay. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Doesn't matter where you've come from. Doesn't matter what your background is. Doesn't matter what adversity you've been through or if you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. The ground is level at the feet of Jesus, and we right. all get to come. Yes. We all get to come, right. and we all get to know him. Yes. Not in my own righteousness, not that I can boast and say what I've done or what I can do or can't do. I'm trusting in the blood. Yeah. I am trusting yeah. in the blood. Hallelujah. Yeah. I am trusting yes. in the blood. Man, the devil hates to hear that, yes. but we are trusting in the blood this morning. We are trusting in the blood. Nothing that I can do, nothing that I have done, but I am trusting in God's only son to deliver me, to yes. save me, to keep me yes. saved, to baptize me with the Holy Ghost, with yes. the evidence of speaking yes. in tongues, yes. to see the gifts of the Spirit in operation, to one day see him face to face. For absolutely everything, I'm going to plead the blood. Yes. I'm going to plead yes. the blood. I'm going to plead yes. the blood. I had some wrong thinking. I'm going to plead the blood. I looked at that person yes. wrong. I'm going to plead the blood. Maybe bigger for you than just that, but I'm going to plead the blood. I'm going to plead the blood. I'm going to plead the blood. Not my own blood, because I ain't got squat. But I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to plead the blood of the Lamb. I'm going to plead the blood who before I ever knew him went to Calvary and laid his life down for me. Knowing again the rascal that I would be, he still said yes. He still said yes to the Father. Yes, I'm going to leave all my heavenly glory. Yes, I'm going to leave all my splendor. And I'm going to go to that cesspool. Yes. Hallelujah. Can we think of our sin for just a second? Oh, I don't mean to do that to you, but it's ugly. It's ugly. What he saved us from, you may have been the best church-going little child ever. <laughs> it was still ugly. It's still sin, and it's only the blood of Jesus yes. that can remove it. It's only the blood of Jesus that can take it away. But I'm so grateful this morning that his blood takes it away. Yes. His blood takes it away. I don't want you staying there too long because you are redeemed. Hallelujah. You are redeemed. But if you should mess up, yeah. and I say if, when... <laughs> When you mess up, yeah, we are. 
And uh, Noah, you've heard me say this uh, many a time as, as well, that if you come home and live with me for a week, yep. you're going to see some messing up. <laughs> and if I come home and live with you for a week, <laughs> I'm going to see some messing up. I guess that's why I'm fond of saying that he loves us right. when ain't nobody else around. Amen. And the blinds are drawn and the doors are shut. And it's just you and him. He knows you. He knows you. Praise his name. And that's the good news this morning. That is the good news is that the one who knows us best loves us the most. And it's not relative righteousness. It's not I did this and I did that. As the Holy Spirit through Paul said right here in these previous yeah. verses. It's not relative righteousness. It's not my own righteousness. Right. Which ultimately relative righteousness just comes back to me. But it's not me. It's him. Right. <laughs> Praise God. It's him. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes. It's him. It truly is Jesus. It's Jesus yes. that has wiped away our sin. It's Jesus that came and took it all away. And when we sin and we say, Lord, I messed up again, his blood washes away yes. all of our sin. Yes. His blood comes and washes it all away. Aren't you grateful for grace? Yes. Yes. I am so thankful for grace. So thankful for grace and so thankful for mercy. There were many, many years that I spent under law and legalism and trying to appease what I thought was, was an angry God. He's not angry. He's not angry. He loves you with an everlasting yes. love. And it's his, he's always the one initiating relationship. He's always the one with his hand down, coming right to where we are, because he knew that we couldn't get to him. But he came with the blood. And his blood washes away all of our sin so that we can know him. So that we can come into the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. We get to come into the Holy of Holies. We get to come in boldly yes. into the throne room of grace to find help in time of need. We don't have to go to Jerusalem once a year and find a spotless lamb, spotless on the outside and spotless on the inside. We don't have to do that this morning. We don't have to go find a spotless lamb, slit its throat, have its blood poured out into a basin and have the blood poured onto the altar. It's done once and for all. I praise God. I can just say Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Glory. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, I come to you in the name praise above Lord. every yes. other name, the name of yes. Jesus. Yes. And Lord, I thank you that right now you have washed all my sins away. Yes. And Lord, whatever you want to do in me and through me, Lord, do it. You've got the liberty to do whatever you want to do. We don't have to have a rope attached to our ankle. <laughs> so that if we do make it past the people and the outer courts and the inner courts and the priests that are singing their praise and past the table of showbread and past all the articles of the tabernacle and when we get into the Holy of Holies, and the blood didn't work. They would have to take out the high priest with that rope and pull him out into the holy from the holy of holies. I'm grateful this morning yes. that we don't have to wear that rope around our ankle. That we just say Jesus yes. and boom, just like that, we're in. Yes. Hallelujah. We are in. As Sam was singing this morning, he is holy. Yes. He is holy. He is holy. 
and we are covered with the blood. Amen. We are covered with the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. You are covered with the blood. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Amen. We're covered with the blood so that we may know him. Yes. That we might know him. And you know, I, I know our Lord knows. He knows who we are. He knows our frame. He knows that we are but dust. He knows that we're dust. He knows that we're flesh and blood. He knows us. He knows all the things that we are busy about and all the responsibilities and duties that we have to take care of. But there's one thing that's needful. That's to sit at his feet and know him. That I may know him. That I may know
us already, but he wants us to know him, that I may know him. He can send the earthquake, he can send the fire, he can send the roar. Oh, 
busyness of our life. He loves you this morning. We love you. He loves you more than anything else. And we're thankful for you, each and every one. Love on each other as we head out this morning. He, we're going out, but he's going with us. And we're thankful for that. And he,